the whole reasoning behind why we decided to go with a third wave was just to make the process out at the start more efficient. With the two wave start, we needed to reload another 13,000 plus runners into the system. And with the limited amount of space we had available to us and the limited amount of time, it just didn't work as well as we would like it to. And it didn't meet our standards. The start team captain committee and the Hopkinton Marathon Committee got together and said, how can we make this more efficient? And by working with less people on a reload versus more, um, we just felt uh, that it would give a better experience to the runners prior to the guns firing off. And that's, that's what our primarily goal, primary goal was. Those in the first wave, and would have been in the first wave, probably won't experience any difference whatsoever. Those in the second wave will start a little sooner than they would have if it was just a two-wave start, and will experience a more efficient loading of their corrals. And those in the third wave, whereas they may initially think they're third-class citizens, will actually um, experience a again, a similar, more efficient process. And on the back end, the last person crossing the starting line won't be much later than what it would have been with a two-way start, maybe a three to five minute difference. The intention of going with three ways versus two is to give a better experience for all the runners and all the volunteers and all those working the start. Right now, there's just a little bit too much congestion for us. And by spreading it out a little bit more in terms of over a three-wave concept versus a two, we are very confident that the experience will be much better for the runners and everyone else involved. The way we anticipate it going is that with wave one going off at 10 o'clock, it'll take approximately seven minutes for everybody to clear the starting line for 9,000 people to clear the starting line. That'll give us 13 minutes to reload, to get way two into the corral system, lined up and ready to go before their gun fires at 1020. Similarly, it should take the same period of time for way two to clear the starting line, that is seven or so minutes, and it'll give us another 13 minutes to reload wave three into the corral system. And for all of them to cross the starting line, seven or so minutes. So the last person, official runner in the race, should cross the starting line almost no later than if we were with a two-way start versus going with the three-way start based on the efficient nature of what we're doing this year. One of the uh, extreme benefits of the Boston Marathon is by virtue of the fact that you have to qualify, now we have some legitimate standards by which to line people up at the start. So every qualified runner in the marathon has a reservation for a specific location at the starting line. So the sense of urgency, the, the need to rush to the start is eliminated and that hopefully also eliminates certain, a certain degree of anxiety before the start that exists at a lot of other races. We will have in each of the waves nine corrals with 1,000 runners in each corral. So corral one will have 1,000 people, corral two will have 1,000 people for 9,000 people in each wave. Wave one will be those runners wearing a red bib number. Wave two will be those runners with a white bib number, and wave three will be those runners with a blue bib number. So it's all color coded. And then you'll know which corral within each wave you are assigned to, because there'll be a corral number uh, that corresponds to the corral you will be assigned to, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, in the lower portion of your bib number 
indicating which corral you will be, you have been assigned to. So you'll know which wave by the color and which corral by the corral number on the bit. Based on the fact that we know what our total inventory is in the race, and based on that we have already bib numbered everyone now, we know that the cutoff time for wave one is around three hours, 23 minutes, and the cutoff time for wave two is approximately three hours and 45 minutes. All the runners in the race will receive their number pickup card in early April, which will indicate which wave and which corral they've been assigned to, so they'll know early on. And then when they come to registration at the Heinz Auditorium to pick up their race packet, um, further information will be included in there to further um, make them aware of, of that information also. Specifically, we would like everybody, obviously, to run in the corral and in the wave they've been assigned to. However, we do recognize the fact that there are people who want to run with other runners in the race. To accommodate that uh, request, we will allow people to move back in a corral or move back in a wave, but not move ahead. However, we want to maintain the integrity of the first corral in each wave. So if you are assigned to corral five in wave one, you can move back to wave two or you can move back to wave three, but not in the first corral of those waves. No matter which wave you're assigned to, you can always move back in a corral, but you cannot move ahead in that wave into a, a corral ahead of you. Uh, every runner, if they don't follow the rules of the race, are subject to disqualification. We've always received total cooperation by runners um, in following the rules and regulations and policies of the race, specifically the lineup at the start. Just about 100% of the runners um, who uh, are uh, assigned, you know, bib numbers in certain corrals follow the follow the uh, the guidelines of the of the BAA the major reason why we're able to have uh, multiple starts wave starts uh, the reason why we recognize that nobody's at a disadvantage no matter where they line up is because of the technology involved uh, given that we use the chip timing and individuals times don't begin until they cross the starting line. Nobody, no matter where they're positioned at the start, is at a disadvantage over anyone else. So we, we time and we place our score by net time versus gun time, which makes it fair for, for everybody across the board.